America are living in a time of nearly unprecedented uncertainty. There's the pandemic, there's political upheaval, yes. there's the economy. Is it going to go up, it down? We don't know. 87% of adults out there say it feels like there's been a constant stream of crises over the last two years. And I agree. That's according to a survey by the American Psychological Association. 73% meanwhile say they feel overwhelmed by these crises and all this uncertainty and change can have a very big impact on our mental health. For more on that, we've got social psychologist Heidi Grant here to explain what this uncertainty is doing to our brains and how to cope with the fear that often comes along with that uncertainty. And that's exactly how it works, right? You don't know what's going to happen, yeah. so you're afraid of what's going to happen. Exactly. And I think it's so important for people to realize that our brains were just not built for this, right? We, for most of human history, were hunter-gatherers. Our lives were relatively simple, predictable. We focused on what was happening here and now and maybe a little bit into the future. Now we live in a radically different environment, right? So much change, so much information, so much uncertainty. And our brains were actually designed to sort of find that threatening. And so what happens is our brains are constantly in a state of threat. We, have, we struggle to problem solve. We struggle to plan. We get overwhelmed by our emotions. We lose our ability to control our impulses. We actually struggle to learn new things and to pull things from our memory when we need it. So we're all kind of walking around feeling kind of terrible, feeling yeah. like we're not at our best. And I think it's so important for people to realize, you know, sometimes we blame ourselves for that, but it really has to do with the fact that our brains just weren't built to handle what well, we're being, we're dealing with. Kind of terrible never seems like a good state to me, Heidi. No. <laughs> so help us out what we can do. Sure. What can we do? What should we do? Yeah, there are a few things that you can do that to kind of help you manage your day to day. One is to really kind of pay attention to what you're paying attention to. I think the more we focus on the here and now, the near future, right, what you're going to do today, tomorrow, next week, this month, mm -hmm. and not a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, can help us to sort of restore that sense of control. Also focusing on what you can do something about rather than what you can't do anything about. I think so many of us feel now there's so much we feel powerless about, out of control, but every one of us has parts of our lives where we can do something to make our own lives a little better, make someone else's life a little better, focus there, and it helps us to restore balance. That's a very helpful list. I noticed you didn't have on the list, turn your back to the children and eat two cookies in secret. <laughs> I mean, <Before> you... <laughs> does the, that work? It works, yeah. It's a great okay. moment of zen for, for a parent. Yeah, do you know there's actually research that shows when we feel uncertain, we focus more on our wants than on our shoulds. Mm. So so we, we do kind of go for the cookie uh, rather than maybe the healthier snack. And it's a good thing to know to kind of push temptation things out of the way a little bit when we're feeling uncertain. Let's talk about fear because sure. fear is a big part of it. Yeah. How can people manage the fear that comes with the I don't know what's going to happen? I mean, uh, I, there's actually, I mean, some of it is acceptance, some of it is sort of getting a little bit used to it, but one really powerful technique that psychologists have studied for a long time is simply labeling your emotion. And this is something anybody can do. It's incredibly powerful. When you're kind of feeling a little bit upset, just pause for a second and say, what is it that I'm feeling? Yeah. I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling tense, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling angry. There's actually neuroscience studies that show that simply labeling your emotion actually starts to bring down the intensity of the emotion all by itself and that's something we can all be doing all the time yeah because you're working with I don't know what's gonna happen or you're also thinking something bad is about to happen that's quite true. often a lot of the stuff we worry about doesn't come true absolutely and I think that that's another thing I often talk to people about is sort of think about the odds right sometimes yes. we we sort of get really worked up about the things that might happen but we don't pause and think well you know what are the chances that it will and that again is one of those things like labeling that can really kind of bring down the emotion all right, Heidi Grant, thank yeah. you for coming. You bet. I need a little calm this morning. <laughs>